Hi, to all the viewers, good morning, um, ladies and gentlemen. So we're now here uh, having our, again, uh, the second series of seven series of seminars. And I am very much proud and privileged to introduce to you our resource person. So for our resource person, uh, she is a full-time faculty at the UP Open University. She is also the current director of the Information and Communications uh, Technology Development Office of the UPOU. She earned her PhD degree in engineering from Keio University in 2017 under the Japanese government scholarship program and a master's degree in engineering from the same university in 2011. This is under the Asian Development Bank Japan Scholarship Program. She has also worked as a software engineer in NEC Telecom Software Philippines right after obtaining a bachelor's degree from the University of the Philippines in Los Banos, where she graduated in 2006 with Latin honors, a cum laude. Wow. Her research interests include crowdsourcing, data engineering, and technologies in learning. So ladies and gentlemen, our viewers are proud to present to you, Dr. Ria May H. Coromeo, PhD. Hello, good morning to everyone. Sorry if I've been fixing my video. Uh, I am playing with technologies actually. So I will be today, I will be discussing technologies in remote teaching and learning. And so I will start to share my screen now. And I hope uh, we have a nice morning. If you have questions, just write them down. And we will have several activities today. So I hope you all participate. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, okay, great. So let me start. This is um, the, uh, the outline of my talk. I will be talking about basic technologies and then learning management systems, particularly Moodle and Google Classroom. Um, some tips or technologies on creating lecture slides or videos and some other useful tools. What are the basic technologies that I'm talking about? For me, the three things that are most important for remote teaching and learning are first, the internet, uh, a computer, a PC or a laptop, and a mobile device. And or, well, you can do without a mobile device, but it's very useful. So this is my setup at home where I do most of my work right now. I have a PC and I use the iPhone as a webcam so that it will be clearer. You can see I was fidgeting somehow with my video because I was trying to set up the iPhone as a webcam. But let's try to, um, sometimes, you know, it fails you. Most of the time it works, but when you want it most, it sometimes fails. Anyway, I'll, I'll try it out again later. Uh, okay, and then of course, lamp lighting is very important when creating video. So it's good for you to have a lamp and uh, this is uh, very old, but having a notebook is also very important in remote teaching and learning. Okay, so for the first activity, I want us all to check our internet speed. Because internet is very important. Uh, let's uh, check our internet speeds right now. I'm assuming that everyone is connected to the internet because you are all here. But let's do a speed test. Uh, go to Google and type in test internet speed. So I'll demonstrate how I do it in, from my phone here. There, just click the run speed test and it will show your internet speed. This was recorded from two nights ago at my house. I'm now in the office, so internet here is faster. But this is in the internet at home. Not bad, it's regular. 
However, sometimes it still goes down. Sometimes it's still higher sometimes. So how about your internet speed? Uh, can you tell me, like, can we show a poll now um, regarding the internet speed of the people? Yeah, there. So please answer this poll. What's your internet speed? If you try, if you tried it. So just answer the poll and then, oh, when I said internet speed here, I'm saying, I'm talking about the um, download speed, not the upload, okay? Sorry, I did not include the upload speed, just the download speed. Wow, quite fast for others. Good to know. Oh, okay. Great, great to see that. A lot of you have fast internet. Wow. Yeah, great, great. <laughs> okay, so when start, when it's very important, right? The internet speed. Okay, is that okay? Can I continue with, the, with the, my presentation? Just keep answering the poll or typing it here and uh, you can test your internet speed anytime you want. And it's very useful so that um, you have an idea of like, what are the capabilities that you can do with your current setup? For example, if my internet is really low, then I will not uh, um, be able to, to do synchronous lectures properly because it will be choppy. So this is something that you can consider, like your internet speed. Okay, I'll share my screen again. Okay, so thanks for participating. Uh, we have different uh, ways to access the internet. The, the most, co I, I don't know if it's really the most common, but normally people have subs internet subscriptions either through cable internet or the coaxial cable, uh, DSL or D digital subscriber line, fiber optic cable, satellite broadband, or mobile internet, mobile broadband. And we also have prepaid internet. So um, usually the best thing to do is uh, when you're doing synchronous lectures like this, I would recommend to have a backup. I always have my mobile phone internet connection as backup, just in case my subscribe, my internet subscription at home goes really bad, at least you have a backup, especially when doing synchronous lectures because uh, you know you just need a backup okay so next i will talk about learning management systems uh, in upod we always uh, we use learning management systems for our classes so we've always used this ever since we we um, put our courses online because we don't have uh, physical classrooms and the learning management system serve as our classrooms. A learning management system is a software application or web-based technology used to plan, implement, and assess a specific learning process. For the teacher, uh, a teacher can create and deliver content, monitor student participation, and assess student performance. On the other hand, Students can access learning materials, interact with teachers and classmates, and perform learning activities. There are many learning management systems out there, but I will focus on the two learning management systems that I have used um, here in the UP Open University, and those are Moodle and Google Classroom. So to introduce Moodle, I'd like to share this video from the Moodle website. Meet Maria. Maria is an educator at Orange Academy, teaching a variety of courses, including media studies, economics, and history. Because she uses Moodle, her learners can easily access these courses, check their progress, and see what they need to do. Maria teaches her courses in English, but Moodle works in over 100 languages. She and her learners are able to quickly talk to each other in Moodle and stay in touch through the messaging and notification functionality. Maria gets her learners to share ideas in forums, 
engages them with media, and uses quizzes to check their understanding. They can submit assignments on the go from their smartphones, and Maria can comfortably grade them wherever she chooses. Moodle's tools help Maria inspire and support her learners. Moodle is used in every country in the world by educators just like Maria, in K-12 classrooms and higher education institutions. Moodle is also widely used for training, professional development and inductions in many organizations and businesses of various sizes. There are hundreds of millions of Moodle users globally and this number keeps rising. What makes Moodle the world's open source learning platform is our commitment to open processes and development, build and support together with a huge and diverse global community of users. Our mission is to empower educators like Maria with powerful, flexible tools that will contribute to and are resulting in improvements to our world. Explore the various ways to get started with your own Moodle site at moodle.com. Okay, um, I received a feedback that the presentation is uh, quality is not really good. Is it really the case for everyone? I hope that the things are my, okay. So, okay. <laughs> I guess it really depends on your internet speed. I'm really sorry about this. Anyway, I will continue. Okay, so I will um, talk about Moodle at UPOU. In UPOU, we have, uh, we use Moodle a lot, as in really a lot, but our main learning management system is called My Portal, and uh, that's where our classes are. We also have another instance of Moodle, which is called Model for Massive Open Online Courses. And there are, you see here, um, the left is my My Portal, and the other one is the model. So I will show you what I can see from my my portal when I am logged in um, via my phone. So I can see some news. This is how it looks like. Maybe um, you're saying that that it's you're thinking that probably this doesn't look so nice at all because it's very very simple i uh, yeah <laughs> i think that it can the the ui can still be improved a lot um it's just that uh the um, my portal our students are mostly adult learners so maybe this kind of layout is not appropriate when your when your students are younger because it's very very textual uh, but you can customize your moodle installation to make it more uh, attractive and uh, nice, uh, the user interface nicer. For the massive open online um, courses, the model, uh, we have a, a bit of a nicer interface. I think this is like more engaging. We have more graphics here because this is more for the general public. And the point is that you can really customize your learning management system to cater for your needs. And Moodle is open source and you can really customize it. Okay. So that's just what you see when you browse through it. It's Model. There are courses going on. You can try to enroll in some of the courses at model.upou.edu.ph. Now, okay. Now, I want to, um, if you want to learn uh, Moodle, you can, you can go to learn.moodle.org. They are offering um, courses until, uh, until I think next week, uh, and they offer certificates and you can enroll in their massive open online course about learning Moodle basics and Moodle administration basics. So everything is there, you can just, uh, access the site register and then you can learn from the creators of Moodle themselves. Uh, so now I want to share how you can install Moodle for your institution or how you can have your own Moodle. 
So there are two ways. First is you go to Moodle Cloud. Moodle Cloud is created by the Moodle people and they have, uh, they offer a free testing. Um, you can just sign up and then they give you a Moodle instance. But of course there are limitations. I think it's only good for 45 days, the, inst the installation and then limited to, I'm not so sure, 50 users? Yeah, I, I think 50 users. Uh, but if you just want to try Moodle out, you can check that out, moodlecloud.com, and then sign up, create a course, invite your students to try it. Um, but if you want to set up your own Moodle for your institution, you can actually do it for free. And all you need is a Google account. So I will now, maybe this is a bit technical. It's not for, for everyone to follow, but um, I just want to take five, about five minutes to share how you can install Moodle in your, for your own institution or just for your personal use using your Google account. Uh, how do we do that? First, uh, go to cloud.google.com and then log into your Google account. They would ask you for some terms of service. And if you agree to that, you can activate your account and input your details. They will ask for credit card details and that's necessary, but they are giving $300 credit for free for one year. And you, even if you put in your credit card details, you won't be charged actually. I think they just need it for some security or records purposes, but, and it's needed to activate the, Moodle, the Google Cloud, uh, but you won't be charged. And even if the free trial ends, you won't be charged as well. So I think it's worth trying out. Basically, Google Cloud is, um, provides virtual machines that you can use or virtual servers. Yeah, you can't use it without a credit card. I'm so sorry, but uh, um, it's very, uh, this is how, how it would go. And I would like to demonstrate how to do it when you are now in your, once you've activated it, just try it out, try to activate your Google Cloud account, and then you will be shown this one. And I will now demonstrate how you can set up the Moodle from, from it. And this is your Google Cloud console. And now we're ready to set up Moodle here. To do that, click this one, search products and resources, and then type Moodle. I will select this Moodle certified by Bitnami. Uh, Bitnami is an application automation platform that uh, will help us install Moodle very easily. All we have to do is just launch this Moodle installation and it will be automatically installed in one of the virtual machines that we have. We can customize the settings. For instance, here we, uh, we call it Moodle and the zone, since we're in Asia, let's choose um, somewhere in Asia, like Asia East B, I think that's in Taiwan, so that's the closest. And let's choose a machine with higher memory. For instance, this one. Also, let's increase the memory size, the hard disk, to 100. With that, we will be charged $33 per month for this Moodle installation. All we have to do now after setting this up, you can change this according to your needs. If you need a more memory or more space, disk space, just increase this. And this is all dependent on how many users will access your Moodle installation. Now, all you have to do is to click deploy and wait a little bit, maybe for a few minutes. 
And you see now that Moodle is being deployed and all you are just doing is waiting. If you want to install Moodle, if you're more technical, you can install this in a quite more complicated way where you can customize it. But this is very easy and I think anyone can do this. And all you really need is a Google account. And you can take advantage of the free trial, $300 for 365 days. It's like I'm advertising. So how much was it? Uh, this would cost $33 per month. So this will be good for about nine months. After nine months of using this, you would have to pay for the usage of the Google Cloud Server. You can see here on the right that you are given the admin user account with a temporary password. Take note of this because we will use this to customize our Moodle site. Now Moodle has been deployed and you have this site address. If we click this site, there you go. This is actually your new Moodle account and just log in. using the credentials given earlier. And let's register the site. I will name it Moodle Sandbox. I would like to register my site. And there you go, site registration confirmed. Now, we have the Moodle site and we can play with it. Really, it's very easy to set the, the Moodle up. Uh, maybe that video was fast, but I will I will um, provide a, a document, like a step-by-step -step on how it was done later on. But it's really easy. Um, you can set up your Moodle instance for, for your university or for your institution. After that, so those are the basic steps, the, the basic setup. Now you have your Moodle account. But then, of course, you have to configure it a little bit more. And these are really more technical, a bit more technical, like setting up the domain name server. For example, for this demo, I, I bought like a domain name at moodledemo.xyz. And then I set up the secure socket layer so that it can be HTTPS. And then we have to also set up classrooms and add users. So there are still some things to do after just setting up the, the Moodle instance. For a full tutorial, I recommend you to go to learn.moodle.org or there are lecture videos also provided by the, the Moodle team and just go there. Now for our activity, um, I would like you to try out the, the Moodle that I just set up. It's at the moodle-demo.xyz and then please create an account when you create an account there uh, you will receive an email from admin user or via moodle demo and from riamahb at gmail.com please enroll yourself in the class and explore the activities so let's uh, try this for about five uh, to 10 minutes is that okay so try if you have uh, if you're having problems regarding this just type it here but so far i i tried this and i was able to self enroll in the moodle demo class okay 15 minutes if that's fine i think we have enough time
So just try it out. Oh, also the the email might be sent to your junk mail or spam mail. So check it out because when I tried it, it was sent to my my spam mail. The site cannot be reached. Okay, let's see why. Moodle. Why is some? Oh no, I don't know why it happened. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so, oh, okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. In some of the, uh, wait, please wait for a while. Because I think in some of uh, the, some places, this might be blocked. Mayor, uh, is there anyone who was able to access the site? already okay great great but other if you can't access it using the site this is an alternative ip address oh okay <laughs> i will add an maybe you cannot see sign up sign up you have you have to sign up because no one has a what do you mean you don't have a junk account? <laughs> I mean spam folder. Okay. Let's I will update the cannot reach. Wait, wait. Please wait. <laughs> if you cannot reach it. So now we are experiencing some technical problems for others. Sorry about that. So many people are not able to access this. Actually, I'm, yeah, I'm having a hard time accessing it too from, from my current internet. I think it might be because that it's blocked in, in my university and at home I was able to access it. Wait. explore the um the Moodle demo and then there are some there are some activities there there is a forum if you have questions later on you can put it there Okay, so, um, all right, yeah, that's a good, uh, the, that's probably a reason. Too many users, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. This is, this, the specifications for this, for this Moodle instance is not very high. Uh, I wasn't expecting too many people to try to access it at the same time. So, uh, 
later on you can access it or i will i will have to increase the specifications for this uh, but now we can continue with the presentation is that okay i'll just continue with with the next topics yeah now i am able to access it now but i guess it is indeed because there are too many connections okay i'll proceed uh, okay so that was the activity i just explore it later on and next we will um try google classroom it's also a learning management system and uh, you need for this you would need a again a google account a gmail account it should be in gmail because the classroom that i created was um, done using gmail so for example um in upou we are our email addresses uh, uh, at upou.edu.ph are google based if i create a google classroom using using that uh, the people who can join my classroom must also have a upou.edu.ph email address but if i create a classroom using my gmail account everyone who has a gmail account can join google classroom is similar to moodle but this is made by google and uh, um it's uh, so you will not experience what you experienced before with the uh, moodle being slow because this is a very powerful they this is installed in powerful machines for sure now that's uh for those who who are not yet using google classroom um i, I just want to show this video by google <laughs> Okay, yes, you can explore Google Classroom. And the, as you saw in the demo video by Google, it's very easy and straightforward. And I think many of you, uh, based on your feedback here, um, have already been using Google Classroom. So I'll just go through this. There is the stream tab, and you can invite students by giving them a class code. And you can add some classwork and leave feedback. Now, for the third activity, I set up a Google Classroom for everyone. Just those who haven't tried the Google Classroom, please feel, feel free to try this out. Go to um, classroom.google.com and join the class and using the code that is flashed in the screen.
You can also download a mobile app in Google Classroom and uh, join the class from there. So I'll give uh, five minutes if for those uh, who want to check it out. And then those who already pretty much know about Google Classroom, uh, maybe you can share. Maybe you can share some of your uh, tips or experiences with Google Classroom. Personally, I use um, Moodle for my uh, regular classes. And then I use Google Classroom for my advising classes, for thesis work, because uh, adding feedback to the documents is easier for me using Google Classroom. Yes, yeah, so. Oh, just explore your, let's see. I will check the Google Classroom that I created and see how many students I now have. Oh, quite, quite, wow. Lots of students already. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. Yeah, it's very... It's very simple, right? The interface of Google Classroom. That's why I think that this uh, many people will opt to use this because of its simplicity. However, if you have if you want more advanced features, Moodle really has more advanced features and you can customize it. So it really depends on your needs and the skills that you or your team has. Okay. Uh, if the code is invalid, I'm not sure why, but maybe too many students already that maybe there's a limit in the number of students that you can access. Oh, there you go. It's, I think, yeah, the code is invalid probably because the class is full already. There is a limit in the number of students. Sorry, sorry about that. You can create your own classroom instead. Just uh, create a class, uh, go to classroom.google.com and then create a class. And then you can post your, your um, code here and then ask uh, the other participants to join it. Okay. Uh, I'd like to show the third ball for, uh, for this activity. Oh, thank you, 250 students limit only. I think if you are using a paid Google uh, suite, uh, it's uh, more, you have, uh, the, the limit is higher for the number of students that can enter the class. So can we show the next poll? Okay, so there is the next poll for this. Thank you for all for your feedback regarding Google Classroom. The one that I post is now invalid because it has it's past the limit already. See, <laughs> okay, I guess more people want to uh, to. Um, to use Google Classroom, it's much easier, uh, very easy to set up. Uh, anyone can, the interface is straightforward, but there are some who also want to use Moodle. I think you can use both if you want. Okay, thank you for participating in, in that activity. Um, 
I think uh, because the next topic that I will be discussing is about creating lecture slides uh, and videos. So I want to answer questions first on learning management systems. Uh, if you have questions about learning management systems, can Yes. There are mga, may mga questions po dito sa Q&A. Q&A. Okay, I, I will check it. Uh, wait, sorry. Yes, I will give you the copy of the slides. It's a big, it's a bit um, big though, because there are embedded videos. But it will be available for everyone to use. Ang main learning management system po ba ay ang school mismo ang gagawa or pwede ang teacher? I think this is a policy that your uh, school or institution has to decide on. Uh, in UPOU, the university uh, established the main learning management system, but then the teachers, the my portal using Moodle, but teachers are free to try out others for their, our classes. That's why I use Google Classroom for, for my advising classes, but for the others, I use Moodle. Need po ba ng domain of school for Moodle? No, you kahit IP address lang. IP address would do, but that's not really friendly, right? And uh, maybe some some in some networks, access to IP addresses only uh, is blocked because if you only have an IP address, you cannot uh, uh, give a secure certificates or SSL. So it's good that you would need a domain name for your school. It's not so expensive to get a domain name for one year. It's um, the dot XYZ cost me just 70 pesos. So you can buy domain, na domain name from Z. I it's go GoDaddy is the more popular one, but Z dot, I got it from Z.com. And dot XYZ domains, cost only 70 pesos for the first year. So try it if you need a dom if you want a domain name. But dot XYZ is not really nice, right? It's just for demo purposes. The dot coms are around uh, 400 or something like that. Still not too expensive. You can just check check it out. Yeah, I'm sorry about those who do not have credit cards uh, because it's necessary to activate your Google Cloud subscription. What are the advantages of using Moodle versus Google Classroom? Moodle, uh, as I said earlier, it's more customizable and there are more features that you can, you can use uh, in Moodle. Okay. Is there any Moodle application available for mobile? Yes, there is a Moodle for mobile. Ah, maybe I can share that. Okay, I'll stop. Wait, I'll stop sharing this and share from my phone. Share. No, I don't have Moodle installed. <laughs> I have it in the other computer. I have. Okay, let's share this. Can you see my screen? No. Okay. Let's see again.
Oh, I see. Uh oh. Sorry, I'm having some technical problems. Can you now see my screen? Yes, okay, so let's see. Moodle. Yes, this is the app for Moodle. This is the first time I'm going to try this. Not so sure if I, it works for my portal, for the UPO Google, uh, my portal, but I haven't tried it with the installation that I just uh, did yesterday. I'll try it. Is it going to work? Let's see if it's going to work. So you see, if you haven't tried this before, you can share your mobile device screen via Zoom as well. So when you're demonstrating something from mobile, just share your mobile device. Okay, it's really slow. Maybe the Moodle demo. Are we patient enough to wait for this? <laughs> okay, while waiting, I will answer more questions. Okay, let's see. Okay. Okay, is there any application available for Moodle Mobile? Yes. Kailangan rin po ba yan install ng students para maka-join sila sa Moodle? You mean, which one? The one in Google Cloud? No. The, only, the institution or the teacher just has to set up the learning management system and then the students will just have to access the, the URL. Okay, easy class. Uh, I haven't tried easy class, but I can check it out for you as well. Oh, uh, do I have to create a new Google Classroom account if I'm going to use my PSHS? Um, if you create your PSHS account, then you can only invite students from the same domain. Can Google Classroom be used for faculty student attendance? Uh, there is no explicit uh, functionality for attendance, but you can create an activity that will monitor attendance. For example, you create an, uh, a question or an assignment wherein you put in like uh, deadlines for the responses and then the responses can be your, can signify that the person uh, was present during that time. So you can design your attendance system using the functionality that are already there. Is Moodle apps good for young learners, grade one to three? Uh, hmm. I think that you can customize your Moodle installation for, for the young learners. But uh, based on experience, it's uh, it's a bit more complicated. Moodle is quite complicated for, I don't know if, I don't know if I were a kid, would I be able to, maybe they're smarter than us, but, or they can adapt, but I'm not so sure about it. I haven't tried. Okay. Do we have local hosting for LMS? Okay, I guess my Moodle cannot connect. I cannot connect using my Moodle installation. So I will just, um, sorry about that. I think it is because um, of the many people are accessing the server, but 
there, there's a there's a mobile application for Moodle and also for Google Classroom. Yes, uh, Blackboard Learn. Yes, Moodle requires less bandwidth. As you can see, the because it's uh, it's lightweight. Moodle is is lightweight, but of course, if you embed videos, then it will be a bit heavy. Okay. Yes. Uh, wala po bang free subscription for Moodle? Yeah, that's uh, actually the Moodle cloud. As I said, there is a Moodle cloud wherein you can try it out, but it has limitations unlike Google Classroom. But the, the, the one that I demonstrated using the Google Cloud, using a Bitnami installation of Moodle in Google Cloud, it's like a free subscription. I'd like to think of it like that. Difference between Moodle and Google Classroom. Uh, there are just really more features in, in Moodle. It's more of the implementation. For example, for me, when I am trying to grade students, well, the, quiz, the quizzes or making quizzes, it's uh, easier in, in Moodle. In Google Classroom, to make quizzes, you use Google Forms, which is quite uh, good, but also limited. For example, in Moodle, you can set the start time and the end time of the, of the quiz, and you can add more restrictions on the quiz in Moodle. But in Google Classroom, since it just uses Google Forms, the, uh, the functionalities are more limited. Yes, if sobra ang student, you have to create sections. So just add a new class. <laughs> Is it safe to use X, Y, Z? No, I, I, I'm not so sure. Maybe not. It's probably some in some institutions, dot X, Y, Z domain are blocked. Can a private tutorial create their own, especially? Yes, definitely. Both Moodle and Google Classroom. Data privacy. Uh, okay, so for, for Google Classroom, your data resides in Google servers. Uh, but for Moodle, it, if, you, you, if you install your own Moodle, the data resides on your virtual machine. So if your virtual machine gets hacked or your Google Cloud server gets hacked, then, then your Moodle might be compromised. Google Classroom, everything can be, can be hacked anyway, but uh, uh, it just depends on the security measures or that you put in place in your server or in the, in the applications. If the whole school will use Moodle LMS, the school can subscribe to the hosting. Yes, the interface can be developed to make it look attractive. Yes, I really agree. Okay, so puede po ba yung Moodle for offline domain at access with one router annex to laptops? Yes, check this out. Ah, okay, I should type the answer so that I can type the answer. I, for, I didn't know. Okay, you can check the... Um, what do you call this? It's called Moodle Box. Moodle Box. And it's using Raspberry Pi. So you just set it up. Now set up your Moodle there. And then uh, you can deploy it to places without internet. And Moodle works offline only in mobile. That's why I wanted to kind of demonstrate it. Let's try again, okay, to demonstrate the Moodle offline. Uh, Moodle can be accessed in your mobile phone offline. But first, you have to download the course site first. And then after downloading, then you can access it. So even you can access the, the contents without, uh, even without internet. I'll try to connect my phone again. Just keep typing your questions while 
I try. Um, oops. Uh -huh. Hold on. Okay, so now this is my um, this is my offline. I no, sorry. This is my UPOU Moodle account using the mobile phone, and I have the courses here. And I can see my materials there. Now you can see here that there is this download course option. And if you download the course, the course materials will be available offline. So that's a good thing about, about Moodle. Okay, for the limits, maximum limits of participants um, for Moodle, you can set this as an administrator. Uh, you can make it as many as you want. For Google Classroom, it was said earlier that for free accounts, it's 250. Moodle app is free to download. Google Classroom is free. Uh, Moodle, is Moodle with the the same features as Edmodo. I'm sorry, I haven't tried Edmodo. Okay. Question about copyright. Can I upload a children's storybook? Wait, <laughs> you're about to download. So my course is worth 27.51 MB and I will uh, download it so I can see it offline. I think, uh, sorry, I, I'm not so sure about the copyright issues. It depends on the license of the material. We usually use the CC licenses in the course materials that we use. Can we use Google Classroom offline? Can anyone answer this? I haven't tried to use Google Classroom offline. I don't think we can, but I'm not so sure, right? Yeah, so I don't think you can access Google Classroom online. Okay. Sorry of the, ah, yeah, MS Teams. MS Teams is like uh, uh, Zoom as well. I haven't tried this. I, I kind of ex explored the Microsoft, uh, Microsoft ecosystem. They have a, they have interesting applications too. The problem is the licensing. They're a bit more expensive. That's why I did not, uh, I did not um, explore them further to be discussed today. Okay, so is it okay if I continue with the next presentations and then, and then um, I'll answer more questions later if we have more time or and try to answer more and more later. Okay. Okay. So I'll stop. All right. 
Now, let's go to creating lecture slides or videos. What do you guys usually use for creating your presentations? I've, I've always been a PowerPoint person. I've always liked PowerPoint. I think it's a very, um, it's very easy to use and lots of, it has lots of features, but there are other, uh, there are other presentation tools that we can still use if you want your slides to have a different look and feel. You have Keynote from, from Mac OS and Google Slides. I like Google Slides when I'm collaborating with, uh, with others. So Microsoft PowerPoint, can, there is an online version of this for 360 and Keynote can be also used in iCloud, but I think the most convenient for collaboration is Google Slides. Uh, there are also other, there are many other uh, tools like, yeah, Prezi, Canva, and, uh, and the open source equivalent of Microsoft PowerPoint in LibreOffice and such. Um, but I'd like to present some of the, of, pre of the presentation tools that are not so popular, but you can try them out. So this is one, and they are claiming that this is very good for presentations when you want to create flowcharts. This, these are web-based, um, but the, you have to also subscribe, but they have free trials. So it's good to try out the, these presentation tools once in a while. And the slide bean, you have this slide bean. You see there is always sign up for free for testing, but in the end they will ask you to pay. And then you also have Flovella, your new secret weapon for engaging presentations. And limit Ludus, this is also a pretty new uh, presentation tool. Uh, I forgot that, yeah, here, the slide bean. The slide bean is uh, what really, what's interesting for me because they, has, they have AI. And if you, can't, if you can't decide how to design your PowerPoint, they use AI to design your layout. So isn't that cool? <laughs> To, to have, um, to have uh, an AI design your presentation. So you just put on, in your content and then the layout will be done by slide bean. So try this out if you're interested in, in using AI for your presentations. So those are just uh, some of the presentation tools. And uh, I think that um, uh, many of us already know how to create presentation tools. And the technology is not just in question. The technology is not just the thing important for creating presentation, but of course the content, the design are also important. And it depends on, on your audience or the students who will be reading or um, studying your content. Okay, so next. I want to um, share briefly about how I create uh, some videos. It's, uh, it's very hard for me to create videos. It, you know, the one that I showed you for, for, um, for creating Google Cloud Moodle, it took, me, it took me like 10 minutes to shoot that video, but it took me several takes. <laughs> And uh, it's really hard to create videos. It's super time consuming, but it's very helpful so that others can replay it. Because if you talk like this, live video, if you play this offline, then there are many, you know, dead air and stuff that you don't really want to listen to when it's not live, right? So it's really hard to create videos. Um, and also you have to consider the environment, the noise, the lighting. But sometimes I think it's really effective to do so. So I use the I use two tools. Um, QuickTime. QuickTime is very easy for screencasting. If you don't, if you just want to show your screen and then have a narration, 
I think QuickTime is uh, is built it's built in Mac. So I'm sorry, but <laughs> I'm using a Mac. So I'm just using the free tools available here. And the QuickTime is uh, is one of the, the free tools that you can use for screen recording. You can all but open broadcasting for software or OBS. Can you have you tried? Have you tried the OBS before? So OBS is a free and open source software for video recording and live streaming. You can check the tutorial here, but I would like to demonstrate what it does. So this is the screen of an, when you open OBS, this is what it would look like. It's an open broadcaster software, an open source software for video recording and live streaming. Now I'm going to show you how I can show a website that I am demonstrating and then show my face in it. Okay, so first we will add a window capture of a Let's choose this, a browser. We will add a browser, for example, here, Google Classroom. We want to show that there. And then we just adjust the size a little bit so that it will fit the OBS screen. There we go. And then I want to show myself, a video of myself. So I will add a video capture. And yes, the device will be my FaceTime camera. Hello. And there you go. And I will position myself here. And then, suppose I want to add some text, I can add some text as well. And let's say Google Classroom. Welcome. Okay. And so that's what I, um, that's what uh, I did for how I, that's how I created something in OBS. And this is a sample output of a recording that I did. So this is Google Classroom demonstration, and it's done in the OBS software that we're doing for demonstration. So actually, I'm demonstrating OBS right now. Anyway, that's all. This is just for demo purposes. Bye. It's The app is OBS. You can download it. It's open source, and it's available for in Windows and Mac. You can just freely use it. Yes. Try it out if you want talking heads. So though, you can use that for talking heads and many other features. Okay. So next, ah, sorry, I turned off my video. Okay. Uh, huh. Next, I would like to share other things. Uh, if you haven't been using Google Sites, you can use Google Sites to immediately create websites for your classes. 
if you want your content to be presented as a website, you don't need uh, too much technical knowledge. Just create googlesites.com and you can easily publish it. Oh, I'm not sharing. Am I sharing my screen? There are many layouts that you could choose from and elements that you could add. They are here. You can also add many pages or other sites. Just go to sites.google.com and you can use this to create a website wherein you can put in your content or learning materials. There are many layouts that you could choose from and elements that you could add. They are here. You can also add many pages and then choose from different themes. Okay, no, you don't have to pay to publish this. You can use Google, yeah. Uh, only users with Google account can create uh, websites using Google Sites, but anyone can access it. Google. And then video conferencing software. Uh, the most, the three things that I use the most are Zoom, Hangouts, Meet, and Skype. Skype is very old, but it still works. I've been using it for a long time. And Zoom is relatively new, but uh, I, although it has uh, encountered security issues in the past, uh, I still use it and we still use it uh, because it works. Lastly, I think this is my last uh, slide for this, and then I will proceed to answering more of your questions. Uh, how you can use your mobile phone as webcam. Now, this is something that I've been like trying to set up for, for a few days already because my, my, the built-in webcam of my laptop is not so good. So I was trying to, I wanted to buy a new webcam, but then, you know, it's more expensive. And then I found out, I researched about this and you can actually use your mobile phone as a webcam just by installing some apps. So uh, can you see me? Can you see me? Like my video, maybe I'll stop my screen share for a while so that you can see my video. Okay, so this is using my built-in um, built camera of the Mac. Then I can choose a different, can you see the difference? Hello. <laughs> Can you see the difference how clear this is? Hi. So when I was able to use my phone as a um, as a webcam, then I was so happy because I can record or participate in online meetings and show myself more clearly, right? And still just use my laptop. So I can share my screen in my laptop and do that. Uh, but the camera comes from the mobile phone. So ha, you can do that very easily. Okay, and how do we do that? I'll share my screen again. It's using, um, using this app called Epocam. The requirements are a Wi-Fi network or a USB cable that connects your phone and your computer. And uh, you can install computer drivers in Mac or in Windows and just get the Apple cam and then that's it. It was so easy. I think I'm sure there are um, many other apps that you can use for this, but this is the easiest that I found, like very minimum requirements and it works. So, the thing is, with this, uh, sometimes if you're, you, because you can connect your webcam through the Wi-Fi, sometimes if, if you can see, I'm a little delayed. 
do you do you notice that my <laughs> my video is a bit delayed <laughs> right it's a bit delayed because it depends still there are so many dependencies like your wi-fi connection uh, so it's better to use a usb so i would recommend uh, connecting through usb if you want to try this out so the delays will be minimal but uh, if you want to use uh, if you for example you have a phone that you're not using anymore and you don't have a webcam you can use that as your webcam uh, to participate in video conferences or create videos. Okay, yes, yeah, so but if I use the FaceTime camera of the Mac, it's a bit blurred. It's not that clear, but it always works. <laughs> okay, that's all actually. Uh, I want to take more time to answer your questions. Oh, and thank you very much for, for listening for a long time here. When you use OBS, do you have to be online? No, you don't have to be online. FB Messenger app for video conferencing. Uh, uh well it's just because it's connected to facebook that i'm trying i'm i'm not using fb messenger i as uh for for work stuff i wanted to like have a have set the boundaries between my personal life and work so i don't use facebook for work most of the time that's just the reason but feature wise if it works for you i think it's fine for the Moodle, is it safe to use the tool considering? Yes, yes, it's, a, it's really safe to use this because your credentials are stored in Google. Of course, it's not 100%. Nothing, no system is 100% free from, from security uh, risks, but uh, it's generally safe. Okay, how much do you need to set up a decent online classroom? I don't know it, the exact figure, but uh, um, these are the factors to consider in your costing, like how many students, how many teachers. So because that the number of users will, will affect the type of hosting that you have to subscribe to. And then you need a person to design the interface and also to provide technical support to those who need that. So you have to consider um, labor costs and uh, implementation cost. My best experience using the online tools inside my classroom. Uh, this, for me, I recently, since I've been using Google Classroom and for, for thesis, for thesis presentations, I really like that uh, you can easily comment on the documents as Google Docs, and then they can reply. And it has really made grading easier. And uh, there are many other tools. And here's one more secret. <laughs> I know, I, um, if you're a programmer, if you know how to program, you can do so many other things. <laughs> Um, you can take advantage of teaching and learn of teaching and learning uh, online if you know how to program. So if you have time, learn programming. I would suggest that uh, because just writing simple programs can make your life much more easier. For example, in one of my classes, uh, it's a programming course, and I created a program that automatically checks the source code of my students. So it made my, my checking, my grading a lot more easier. So yeah, that's my tip, learn how to program. <laughs> User-friendly platform for LMS, I think. Uh, uh, there, are, there are many others. Canvas is also user-friendly, I think, although we don't have a subscription for that. I tried it and it's also user-friendly, but uh, uh, among the free tools, I think it, it would be Google Classroom. 
what is the basic setup for online learning hardware wise oh my i think that you would if you would be creating online videos or videos and have some synchronous lectures like this uh i think the processor should at least be an i5 processor and 8 gig ram okay let me show you how i did the, the how i did the presentation today so this was my setup while i was presenting the powerpoint was here and then the chat was here so that i can see some of your questions as i was presenting and i would feel that there is actually a response and i this is i was just sharing this window so if you want to share uh your presentation slides just present them as a window i think you can do that you can do that like let's see here so this is my powerpoint and i will slide show uh, set up show and so you set it up as a as an in browse by an individual or window instead of the default that is pre it's presented by a speaker because if i click presented by a speaker uh -huh, let's go. okay so if it's presented by a speaker and then i click on present what do you see uh it, it will be like this and if I share the entire screen, I cannot just share a window. So it will be hard to present seeing my slides and then seeing the, uh, the responses or anything else. So that's why I would recommend you to click slideshow and then set up show and then just present it in a window. Present, present it in a window and then when you play this, it's just a small window. And when you screen share, you just share the screen and not the entire page. Okay. Is that okay? Okay. Now I'll stop screen sharing. Uh, when recording a video, how can we integrate the PowerPoint in the video screen using OBS? So this is OBS. And if I want to integrate my PowerPoint slides there, I will just add um, window capture. And then find my PowerPoint presentation there. Okay. And so, okay, so I can go through my slides and record while recording it. So um, I will just, what I have to do is click start recording here and then I can go through my slides. Like if I click start recording, this part in the program will be recorded and then I can have my slides on the left and then, um, and then present it explain it and then this will be recording recorded yeah so try to download this obs studio uh it just uses a quite a, a lot of memory so if your computer that's why i'm recommending a um at least i5 processor and and the 8 gig ram yes and uh, one of the things that I also would like to tell you is to be patient with technology because just if, if something does not work, just keep trying, trying again. And you just really have to be patient with, with, with these things. Thank you for your questions, for participating in this webinar. And uh, thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, BRDICTMC1 World Champion at World Summit on Information Society Prizes 2020 by International Telecommunications Union, 
we wish you a safe and blessed week. Please stay negative. Bye po!